they told me it's a diff difficult name for you. At least in Romanian, is that true? My name and my surname. Yeah, focus, it's fine, but not in the slang English, if you know what I mean. Focus. <laughs> yeah, I'm the EMC bonus. <laughs> right. No, it's not good work, dude. No, no, uh, that is. Sorry? Oh, that's no, also fine, yeah. Because yeah. they're going to kill their own products. <laughs> I don't mind, I can be a multiple focus. All right. Um, we start a bit late, but it's supposed to be 45 minutes. It's not going to be that much. I tend to finish earlier or give people a break if I see any yawning. So whoever is first gets a cup. <laughs> and a punch in the face. No, I'm joking. Um, I need to apologize, but first, um, I missed up oh, things. Can you tell me how many people are staying for tomorrow? Okay. We're having um, Old Flash Fast Deep Dive tomorrow, 3 p.m. And I think it's going to be on the big tent room next to the pool. Um, I, I, I can just fix I thought this one is, was supposed to be a presentation, so it's more generic. And I'm going to be doing a deep dive, which is definitely more deep dive technical than Old Flash Fast and all that, uh, tomorrow. So I strongly invite you to join us tomorrow if you were expecting uh, uh, more digital content for this time because of the focus group affection. So that's it. Okay, I'm here to, um, you know my name already, we, we talked about it. I come from uh, Poland, but literally um, Eastern Europe did that because I cover most everything that goes west from Germany, like with most of the vendors is under my Scope of work, and I'm happy to be traveling around like the Panos. Maybe some of you know Panos. No? Yeah. He's the sales guy, so sorry for that. Um, <laughs> um, he's covering the, the sales over here as well. And um, I'm replacing Yasin Yuhash, and maybe some of you met him. And um, he's a great guy over here, so that's pretty a challenge for me. Uh, over seven years with NetApp already, and um, over 10 years with NetApp Technology, which I started as an admin. Uh, I got the first pass in my hands, and it was a lot of first touch of the keyboard to the side. So now I've been working with it ever since. I cannot imagine moving elsewhere, and it's working in a different place in terms of um, my network. And um, as you might be knowing already, NetApp is in the ranking of Fortune 500 best companies. Um, well, biggest companies, and usually among the 10 first, whichever country you go to, uh, best places to work for. And I can uh, admit that as well. Not only because of the work conditions, but because of the passion we share for technology. But we're not creating storage as such in terms of hardware, in terms of um, discounts, whatever we're creating solutions. Simply because we're not creating hardware. We're buying it from a regular vendors like Seagate, Intel, Fujitsu, whatever. We just assemble it in the way we want it to have it. But we create software that makes a difference. And this delivery is going to be around that. Um, Any one of you not familiar with NetApp at all? Great. Right. Very simple. Easy. Uh, this, um, there's always um, a challenge around the story we should start with. Like this kind of presentation, especially if we're not talking about the language, and it applies to me as well. I like this example. I got a 4 a.m. today to fly over here to Munich from my original city, which is Poland, <coughs> Poland. It's not four, so. so I'm not living in the capital. It makes it even more difficult. I need to go through a hub. Um, this pretty much gives you a perspective of what's happening in the air every second. It doesn't change throughout the day, because if it's a night over here, it's going to be day elsewhere. So this load of traffic moves. It just gives you an example of how much data needs to be processed and stored every second anywhere in the world. I have dozens of examples like that. Last year I used to talk about um, a Super Bowl. Super Bowl final which attracts, I think, 8 million people in front of TV. Another 8 million or 
30 million in front of internet delivery, and uh, of course 100,000 on the stadium. We are a proud technology sponsor of Super Bowl last year. In terms of every ticket check, every transaction going through, every MMS, every SMS, every delivery, which happened during uh, the game was going through NetApp. Simply because the telecom delivery is stored on NetApp, the system that was checking the tickets was on NetApp, and um, everything else you can imagine was on NetApp. Over here, aircrafts are processing gigabytes of data every second. I think you have heard of the plane, um, I think he dropped down like two years ago, lost somewhere on the Indian Ocean. Um, his black box was stored on tape. That made it literally unreadable after some period of time. We're creating this storage, this storage solution. These days, storing everything on disk is much more effective because of the duplication, density, the, um, the capacity growth of SATA disk, whatever. But the speed of storing data that makes a difference over here. And um, there are several reasons we should, why we should talk flash. There are no non-default ones. I, I think each one of you would um, assume there's a, a reason they would choose flash. My favorite one is um, the laptop. Which one of you has a laptop, right? Yeah. Well, then, all right, you can raise your hand again. <laughs> oh, well done. You have a laptop. Well, um, is there anyone left in the room who has a serial apple drive in their laptop? Oh, that's a pity. <laughs> Um, can any else of you <laughs> uh, tell me why are you having SSD drive on your laptop? Speed. Speed. Right. Would you reverse and wait. the serial data? No. <laughs> why? Because of speed. It's the same for flash. It's a new standard. It's a disruptive technology these days. Not in terms of availability. In terms of the way the SSD drives and flash itself change the approach to the market. <laughs> There is one more shock. Shock. Sorry? I can shock. do this with the laptop and the shock through. Oh, yeah. shock through. Well, you know, uh, not to advertise Lenovo, I used to have Lenovo T45, T42. Um, don't ask me how, but I got it under the shower. <laughs> it survived. I spilled the juice on it. It survived. It would have survived everything. But yeah, SSD might be a reason as well. And if you are managing the data center, these drives will not generate heat, will not spin, and will not be fragile to shock. So energy. So energy. So fewer, fewer energy, of course. And um, SSD are able to advertise the thing that um, they're going to collapse because of the weather leveling. And what NetApp is doing in the solutions, we are proactively replacing drives. As you know, we have a color home feature called AutoSample, available with all our models. And um, once we receive an information that this drive is likely to collapse within the next days, hours, weeks, whatever, we simply send you a new one. And you, and you might be quite surprised when a, when a guy is knocking at your door, carrying a new drive. Well, hey, you want on eBay again? No. We're replacing the drive proactively as well. But I should have got to this later on the stage, uh, so we can move to it. A data fabric is the newest, well, it's over one year old, but it's the newest marketing slogan we have. Um, all these planes everywhere in the world are generating data. This data needs to be constantly available, needs to be storable and accessible all the time. This involves several different solutions from all the well, I would say technology partners, also from competitors, but I'm not going to mention competitors. That's not the style of delivery I prefer. Technology partners. We have a great guy over here called Nepo Pesco. I don't know if you ever met him. He used to be an NetApp guy and I'm working, unfortunately, with Veeam. We lost a very good asset. But Veeam is a great example of technology integrated for us because they understand fast, they understand on top underneath, and they're able to make use of it effectively using storage mechanisms. 
Um, this technology integrators will be present anywhere we go. For example, in the aircraft industry, because we, we are not able to influence that much, which solution they can use. That's why then I've decided to create data solutions. We're not creating silos like NEDA Hybrid Cloud. Come on, customers, use only one vendor cloud and store data with your vendor. <laughs> no, you're not going to do that at all. We are constantly integrating with the broadest amount, uh, amount of technology providers that we are able to do. Cover at one point. We want to cover every adoption there is of storage and technology and integrate to it. That's why we call it data fabric. Whatever you do, whatever you do, you have a freedom of choice. I can guarantee you that with this approach, any technology you have on deck, on board, will be capable of using that solution. That solution in terms physical array, in three different models, we, we're going to cover in terms of flash on the next slide. In terms of virtualized systems like cloud on top, virtual on top, anything like that, on separate systems which are able to replicate and integrate with fast, with virtual on top, with anything else you would put in place. With third party arrays, that's where the competition comes in. Um, you can put it behind any fast box you choose and use the capacity you have over there and make use of the on top features on it and talk to cloud. How do you react to cloud in Romania these days? Mm. <laughs> so actually the Polish and the Romanians speak the same language in the end. <laughs> exactly the same. Yeah. I think only the people that sell the cloud are interested in the cloud so much. Uh, obviously. Uh, but in the end of the day, it's about the money, right? If we sell, we speak about the money, but whatever you do, it's about the money in the end. The business who pays for the storage. With all due respect, no IT admins, no IT managers, no, nobody in the data center is paying for the storage, it's the business. It's always about the money. So if Silicon Valley is creating the idea of cloud, sooner or later we're all going to have to use it. There's no excuse. Because what they are going to do, they will decommission the solution they currently provide just to force you to use cloud. And then when your controlling finance manager comes in, or the audit manager comes in and tells you, well, we need to be confident and I need five years support 24-7 for this, you will have no choice. How many of you, if you don't mind me asking, are customers and which, who is the partner for Meta? Customers first. I used to be a customer, so I can raise my right hand. And the partners, I suppose, the rest. Uh, the partners, I'm telling you, you want to be the first. You want to be the first who introduce cloud to Romania. Do not resist to the temptation of introducing cloud. Do not say it's only the sales apology. <coughs> we talk cloud. Because it's going to be the same like with Hoover, like with Junkers, like with Adidas. Who is the first stays the first forever. And it's going to use your language. Romania is going to use your language. In Poland, you don't wear sneakers. You don't wear sports shoes. You wear Adidas. In Polish, we say, Nosze Adidas. So we, I'm wearing old shoes, but we are saying that does. I'm not having a heat unit in my bathroom, I'm having Junkers. It doesn't have to be Junkers. Ask my family from London, are you having a cleaning machine? No, I'm having Hoover. It says Salomon on it, but it's a Hoover. It's a for zero for photocopies. Zero. Yes, yes. <laughs> Every time you go to a Canon copier and you Xero, the Xero guys are just simply <laughs> under the roof. <laughs> yes. And um, somebody, some of you might not know, but it's the same for Meta. Every time you use your array to do a snapshot, you paint something in Meta. We patented the trademark of snapshot. 
scope of those works on, it, on any of the array snapshot on there, so on there. Okay, that's the philosophy we cover. And I'm going to touch one more. It's five. At least for this reason. It's money again. You might be surprised. Um, IDC is, uh, this one is Gartner. IDC is doing the same. We are presuming that 2017 is the latest. Let's take into account 1.6 a terabyte SAS drive. It's going to be the same price like SSD drive. At this point, why use SAS? Big, big storage. Same price. Same price. Heat. <laughs> you want more heat? <laughs> No, sure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but I, I'm, I'm looking for a reason to use SAS. Is there any? No, there's not. There will be tenders asking for SAS for some specific reasons, because of the standards or whatever. But they're going to grow old quite soon. They're going to be retired. We're going to all use SSD. It's yeah. the same like with fiber channel drives. As you know, um, apologies again for this a bit sovinistic, but I can see some of you remember the mind train and perhaps even touched it. I have a slide which I'm not showing over here, but it clearly says that the main frame, which wouldn't, I think, fit from here to the window pretty much, was capable of doing this thing. Right? In terms of storage and performance, able to do exactly the same. This is the last reason for using SSD. Shrinking of technology. Consuming less and less space. I don't know about you, but I see more and more RFIs and tenders asking for a specific solution which cannot take more 
than the specific amount of cap floor capacity in the, in the center. If you are not able to do it, you cannot. So trying to find capacity, floor capacity always, as well, can save. Um, these days, they are providing SSD technology itself on drive. <coughs> I'm very much looking forward into this model, flash cars. They will be faster than drives because of the interface. We're still using SAS interface, same like with mechanical disks for drives. This one's going to be faster because it's on PCI. I hope something happens <coughs> this year, earlier next year, around there. Right, the three models we provide. Now we're going into environmental, so forgive me for this long introduction. Three models we provide these days. Fast is a crown jewel of meta. This is a secret of our success. We made billions on it, on fast with on that. And I'm going to go with every good one, each one of those on the following slide. E series, this one is unified storage. This one is for block storage, cap performance only. And it's capable of doing much more than fast in terms of performance, but it's a single factor, it overtakes fast work. And Solidfire, our newest acquisition, we spent almost one billion dollars on something which is sound of the future in Romania and Poland, because we still took cloud in this work. But this one is for third generation workloads based on cloud, and I'm going to tell you why. But this one will be covered in greater detail, because I suppose um, it's the newest thing, and you might not be familiar with it yet. That much. Okay, first of all, also fast. It's fast, right? The technology stays the same, the controller stays the same, on top differs. And why it differs and how it differs, I'm going to tell you tomorrow, 3 p.m. in the tenant. But what's most important, each and every license is included with all flash pass. So whenever you buy a box, you get a booking. You don't have to consider, in terms of finance or functionality, anything anymore. You have everything. Storage efficiency is always on by default. So you have an inline identification. I can tell you that it's inline identification these days for flash fast and compression as well. You can use each and every protocol using the same box. And that's what totally differs now from competition. I was um, surprised to learn from my partner. I thought everybody else would do it. No. NERA is the single vendor that introduces Unified Target Adapters version 2, which these days is capable of delivering Ethernet, <coughs> Ethernet and 16 gig fiber channel out of the same SFP Plus module. Single one. If you're getting like four ports on this device, eight ports on this device, you can divide by two and have 10 gig Ethernet and 16 gig fiber channel at one time at one box, and use any of those protocols. Secure multi-tenancy and multi-protocol access allows you to present the same LAN to the NCSI and find the channel. Each and every box of these gets maximally utilized out of 48 drives. With the amount of ports it has, you are able to do every bath, full bandwidth with the ports that are available on board and with 48 drives only. And that's only because Intel is not providing cheaper, better processors, and the um, RAM keys are not that efficient yet. We are only limited by controllers, not by the drives. SSDs are faster than any other technology on the market these days. Please do not attach yourselves to these capacities. I just mentioned them as an um, example. But to make a long story short, all flash fast is a different price than fast with attached SSD drives. This one is much more cheaper, it's a bundle. And you wouldn't believe if I asked Thanos to tell you what the price is for the partner. But customers are here, so we're not going to lose the market. <coughs> and kill the business because of that. Um, for the last two years, every meeting I started in Poland was introduced by sentence, but yeah, we, thought, well, we are thinking that but it's very expensive. So probably not. Not true. Not true. Not true anymore. 
check the pricing, check the performance, and it's pretty obvious at the moment. All right? And the system that goes on it. Um, who has the heard of cluster data on top here? Don't be shy. Great. So this delivery is for the people only. And well done, guys. You all heard of cluster data on top. That's impressive. Um, NetApp assumed that two controllers on the array are not enough, not anymore. And that's pretty obvious that we can use this device to access 10 gigabytes of shares from our telecom providers every second, 10 gigabytes. So for example, Polish telecom provider, and Romania might be quite the same, has 2 million subscribers times 10 gig. And these people are not going to use technical only, they're going to use a lot more. Big data. Big data applies to everything. The, growth, the data growth is impressive these days, and it's going to grow and grow again. Have you heard of all the plans and BMW plans that they're going to um, give you the opportunity to increase the power of your car for a weekend, for example? They will connect remotely to the computer on your deck, give you host power, just turn it on with a function, and turn it off after two days. It requires a big amount of storage to collect data from the car and analyze it. Cars, aircrafts, mobile phones, everything collects, creates data. It's big data. It's growing very fast those days. So we assume two, two controller array is not enough. We're not going to handle it this way. It's not the philosophy we're going to uh, provide. Plus the data on top is the only developed system these days. We spend $1 billion every year to develop data on top. Nobody else does it because everybody else has different operating systems for different families. We have one for all the collection of buses. We can connect up to 24 nodes, up to 12 arrays, to 10 gigabit internet on the back end into one logical system. That gives us 58 petabytes of capacity available from a single logical array. <coughs> one single man point if you're using uh, network attached storage. 58 petabytes. But if you don't want it, you can partition it into hundreds of SVMs, so virtual arrays. But guess what? From the outside, it's going to look exactly the same, like a regular array. It's going to have its own protocols, its own identity, QoS policies, administrator, volumes, whatever you think of. Because that's the way we want you to do it. We want you to connect several hardware pieces, partition it, QoS it, and use it effectively and efficiently. Efficiently, I mean transparency in migration. What's the point of connecting this way? Guess what? You can migrate volumes between, between these devices non-disruptively. Transparently for the application, nobody will know this. And same applies to Ethernet ports over here. You can migrate a port with its IP to a different device, transparently to application to a user. For what reason? 100% availability. You need to do something with this device, migrate everything out, maintain it, migrate everything back. It's not 39 nines of availability anymore, it's 100% of age. We introduced several new features made on top. We're not developing the two controller version anymore. It's only being maintained, it's not being developed. So everything new is going to happen with cluster data that only, and all the new devices will have this operating system installed. There will be no alternative. But the main differentiator is always also QoS. So your ability to create the limits. For example, a given SVM is functioning on. So let's imagine this one is red, so it's going to be the most powerful one for fiber channel. This one is blue. So it's going to be for your home shares, and it's going to host NAS only. And this one is very light, so it's going to be for bank captains or on the safe and all, and you can balance it effectively on every time. And in the end, this chapter is for cloud automatization and self-service applications. Whatever your cloud definition is, mine is pretty rough. It's virtualization with automatization. 
there, is there a minimum amount of heads for the cluster to be, to be done? <coughs> minimum amount yes. of nodes? Uh, of heads, of clusters. Yes. Two. Oh, okay, only. Is it one? <laughs> one you can do one, but. <laughs> Yeah. There's no cluster. <laughs> Tell me about migrating workloads on one control. That works. It still works here, but it's like, it's like driving a car with three wheels, you know? <laughs> but, uh, it's a matter of approach. It, it sounds better, I have three good wheels rather than I have one road. Right? That's the way we say it for me, anyway. Um, in terms of performance, you might think of, well, if I'm putting that many disks, on SSD, and uh, SSD disks on the task, well, the performance is not going to be that good. Because the controller is going to limit itself. We have waffle file system, we have data efficiency features, which might all impact the performance. And that's really quite possible. I was also surprised with that. Uh, you might recognize this tool. If not, that's the most common tool we use at our SIP of that, Customer Proof of Concept. There's a guy called Network for Brazil, pretty famous one. I don't know if any of you ever went to Insight. But um, this guy is presenting his results working on fresh solutions. We put 48 drives on 86 systems. 48, why 48 again? Why 48? Sorry? Maximum number of blocks. Wrong. Control. Sorry? You can't count the controls. I can't count the controls. Can my own space controls maximum. To get the maximum yeah. space. Yeah. I told you before. 10 minutes left and I'm only starting. Yeah, the interface is already in the No, 48 drives is the enough amount to saturate the controller at full extent. <laughs> Yes. So it wasn't wasn't a good answer. So <laughs> this this cap is not going away. Um, as you can see, that's a ninety percent read, ten percent write workload. Um, almost to get two hundred ten thousand IOPS <coughs> and zero point eight microsecond slides in C. We move the slide a bit and increase the writes to twenty percent. What's going to happen? With the performance of the system, we increase. We are increasing rights. Nothing. Wrong. Okay. Finally, you made it yourself for the call. Well done. <laughs> it's gonna increase less. SSD stop the difference for you. I'm gonna tell you why tomorrow. But first of all, we are use, making more bigger use of RAM because we are coalescing writes in memory instead of putting them into SSD. Why? Garbage collection. We are leveling in garbage collection of SSD drives. If we keep writes for the longest available time in memory, it decreases the chance we're gonna overwrite the block because it might happen. As you know, 80% of the whole throughput is going to a 20% of the capacity. That's a general rule. So as long the longer you have it in memory, the biggest chance, the bigger chance is you're gonna overwrite it. So we make it in memory and then and, and RAM is the fastest thing in the control road. We move the slide, we increase the bandwidth, we lower the latency because of the memory, and we increase the number of virus. And that's proven. Come over tomorrow and learn why in further detail. And um, that's a very interesting thing in terms of uh, marketing. But what the butterfly effect is in a short story. Since we are increasing the amount of data and we everyone is best in providing the duplication of data at this extent, what does it mean to a controller? I'm more busy than duplicating data in my memory and processes. For all the vendors, and it's actually proven, it means we cannot guarantee performance above some level because of the duplication. If we introduce the duplication, well, we're done, we're limited. NetApp is surviving that because of the algorithm we're using the duplication. Also, putting the duplicated data and counting it in memory again, what I said about coalescing drives, is causing SSD drives to work more in terms of writes and reads 
we're analyzing, putting it back, analyzing, putting it back. I don't know if you know, but there are at least two vendors I learned about who are defending the warranty they give you for your author storage on your workload. You need to declare what's going to be put on your storage in order to get a price for a warranty. And that's very true. In NetApp, you can count on seven years' warranty of an SSD drive. No conditions apply. You just buy seven years. Every time, like I said before, proactively or post-priori, whenever your drive is broken, we replace it. Seven years, and we guarantee that. There's nobody that can prove it, because there are non-industrial um, SSDs on the market that would be there longer than two years, so nobody knows if it's going to survive seven years. But the predicted lifetime of an SSD drive is usually seven years. And I think that's unique about us over here. Moving to performance-wise things. E-series. Uh, as you know, uh, years ago, NetApp acquired Ingenio and the LSI division for block storage. We developed a bundle. Actually, this array is the same as this one. Same controllers on a 2.5 inch shell for 24 drives. We can start with six. Same controllers. With the latest firmware and with the fact we increased the memory of this box to 96 gigs uh, in March, we are able to provide, provide 825,000 IOPS of sustained throughput. Doesn't matter which rate level. Out of 48 drives again. Why 48 drives? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I got this time. Very um, And we are winning with that. Because we are cheaper than anything else, and the market has proved it. Proves it. There's no better performance except for IBM Flash Array. I need to admit that. Sorry, they're using PCI models and not the drives. They're faster. Single array can do over 1 million IOPS. But they're four times more expensive. And I'm not joking, four times more expensive. So this box makes a hell of a story in the Indian market. It's a cold power flash grenade. It can replace a huge box of disks, mechanical disks with small unit, four U factor units that delivers this amount of performance. Take a look, there's a try-by program. For free, you can get a new box 45 days and test it on your own. If you don't like it, send it back, even on that expense. But we are doing it because we think, well, we are sure that we will not be willing to give it back. And actually, uh, in terms of enterprise approach, there's a, a biggest enterprise hosting provider in Poland called Beyond.pl, who said that a single array on our data center, and they have huge, single array that hasn't broken in any term within the last two years. Every other device had some issues. They didn't have a single drive failure, a single well, piece of controller failure. 100% availability, that's enterprise, even though it's so small. Right, um, how to choose between those two? I'm talking three devices flash. Why, how to choose between class and E-series? If you want to drive fast, that thing is fast. I don't know if you drove it, that's ridiculously fast. And the way it accelerates, that's a different story. But you need equipment with it to go for Tesla. If you need uh, performance on and performance on, and you don't care about the rain or the wind, you go for a series the main differentiator in terms of romantic story. And now Solidfire, a startup uh, started from scratch, took a Dell box, you might, some of you might recognize it, it's a Dell box, it's a server, with one controller, took 10 drives, SSD drives, wrote a unique OS called Element OS, available for, as a virtual instance as well, called Element X, put it on this Dell box, put 10 drives on it, start, with four nodes, this is the smallest factor you can get. Guaranteed performance, guaranteed um, capacity, guaranteed quality of service, and guaranteed availability as well. Did it work? Well, we didn't pay one billion dollars for nothing. 
this side with zero. Okay, can I take a bit of a break to finish this off? Sorry, it's so good talking to you that I lost a sense of time. Uh, let's start with four nodes, we can grow up to 100 nodes. 100 nodes. Every node gives you 50,000 IOPS guaranteed reset rights. The math is very simple. Um, 7.5 million IOPS out of this device. And trust me, eBay, Taipo, whatever is stored in trying to data center for Amazon is using this one. They reach 100 nodes limit and they're moving further down with another devices. Um, all inclusive, no additional licensing, same like with E-Series, same like with all flash pass, and quality of service. Integration provided at this point with some certain integration partners, but it's gonna grow. There's a big announcement coming for Solid Fire on the 2nd of June. I cannot tell you what it is, but I look forward to it, because it's official that it's coming. Um, Symphony High Unavailability, they created a file system called Helix. What is it about? They create a copy of each <coughs> of data, and it's working the customer. That's why we have growing the capacity. We assume that there's at least one copy of data. So we secured to lose well, the whole one node. Might be even more, but at least one node. Because if it happens, we just redistribute the copies. And that data is constantly available. Together with that, we assure the quality of service is sustained and the availability of data is sustained. Using solid fire. Uh, quality of service, and I would love you to make, pay attention to that. Not only block variable, you can set different quality of service for a different block, but it tells you a minimum, which actually makes sense. Might make sense. And a maximum. Why does minimum make sense? With so many workloads and securing multi-tenancy, you want to be sure that your workload doesn't go below something in case of failure. So if you have a customer, or you're hosting a workload that is gold tired and they take a lot. You're not, ha you're not having many of those on one system, you spread it around. So you want to assure that anything happens, this customer gets a bandwidth he paid for. You don't want to lose this customer. That's what the minimum is for. And obviously in these days it's a standard inline multiplication and compression. Um, a standard that forced everyone to catch up to data domain. It's not data domain being best anymore, it's everyone doing the same these days. It's in terms of 30 to 1 to 1 identification ratio, for example. So it's about cost saving. To make a long story short again, this thing also has snapshots, clones, ability to uh, dynamically migrate <coughs> data, to increase and decrease the size of the cluster, the amount of storage, etc. I see a side and finish. Um, and multi-protocol, but I don't want you to be mistaken. If you have a 100 node cluster, you're going only going to have eight fiber channel ports. Eight. It's not a mistake. For a reason, we're, we're really looking into Ethernet solution, not fiber channel anymore. Uh, but that's a different discussion I'm going to leave it for tomorrow. All right, um, some references. I talked about eBay PayPal. These are more most imaginative. But um, there are some examples we can speak about. It's not, um, I'd say, a startup technology anymore. It's conventional. And um, like I said on insights last time, if somebody needs solid facts, give them the numbers. The sales of all flash within NetApp grows every quarter by 140%. It fluctuates around this number. So it proves we are right with what we are doing. And um, I don't care about the capacity because it can vary. But we have 200 tech patterns on Flash. There's going to be another one with rate triple parity coming next month on Montagnac. If you're curious what it is, yeah, something to learn about. Triple parity. First rate to provide triple parity with the range of coding. That's a proof. That's it. For, for the end. Because for Flash, it has to be that everything you can think of can go to Flash. Flash is a double for anything you can imagine at these days. Let's forget the capital. Let's move to SMPs. 
And if you think flash, you may not. And surely we can deliver something for you. To be continued tomorrow. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.